Hey, Paul here for Retro Gaming Arts, and today I'm going to be showing you exactly how I do surface mount soldering using the PCB boards for the test cartridge that we uh, just finished making. And so let's start with the tools that you'll need. So first you need a project to be soldering. So here we have some capacitors and then we also have the chips and then the PCB boards and we're going to be surface mount soldering these. So I'm going to be using uh, hot air and I'll be using the hot air with a five millimeter tip on it and then I'll be using my soldering iron with a three millimeter chisel tip on it as well as the traditional um, soldering iron tip as well going back and forth and then you'll also be using uh, various different tweezers and then also some solder paste in addition to regular solder as well and then always having a solder sucker on hand is good and then most importantly almost is the flux and then a way to apply the flux like a nice little paintbrush. And then the temperatures we're going to be using is 285 degrees for the hot air. And then we're going to have our hot air at a level in between about 7 and 8. About like, about 8. And then for our iron we're going to be using it at 325 degrees. Alright, so let's start soldering. Now first we're just going to you know get our all our components ready. Getting all of our... Uh, capacitors out and just ready to go and then once we have those all ready what we're gonna do is we're gonna use flux and then we're gonna put flux all over the board but first always wear a mask and then we're gonna put flux on and essentially solder paste is just tiny tiny little balls of solder suspended in flux and that's that's what solder paste is so you wouldn't you don't necessarily fully need flux but it just makes your life easier and I just want to get into the habit of always using flux well I think I'm already in that habit so we're just putting flux all over all the different uh, areas and then we're gonna tin them we're gonna tin them by applying solder to them before we actually solder and we're gonna be doing that with solder paste and regular solder which varies based upon what you're going to be soldering for this, I'm going to be using solder paste and regular solder just to show the difference of both. So I'm just applying the solder paste just across in a line over the flux of the points on the, of the chip. And then the pads for the, for the capacitors are a little bit bigger, so I can just use regular solder. It's very important to only put a tiny bit of solder when doing this. You don't need too much. And then here for the pads for the chip, we're just going to run our iron. And if you notice, we're using the bigger iron, not the chisel tip. We're using a bigger tip because you're just running all that solder paste over the pads and it's just tinning each one perfectly. And then a little later on, what we're going to do is we're going to clean up uh, the excess solder paste and the excess flux. But before we do that, I'm also going to show you what it looks like to tin it with regular solder. So you kind of just do the same thing with regular solder. And for doing this, this is, since there's no, since it's regular solder, you would absolutely need the flux to do this. And then we have one bridge connection and we're just going to wipe that away and continue to tin every single pad. And now that we have all of our boards tinned up, we're going to use some isopropyl alcohol and some Q-tips to clean up the boards, get rid of the excess flux, excess solder paste, and just have it nice and clean. So that way we can uh, start to solder. Now, because we've tinned these parts of the board, you don't necessarily need to tin the components. You can. But for, for the capacitors, we're not going to. We're just going to take our hot air solder gun and tweezers, pick up the capacitor, heat up the solder a little bit, put the capacitor right on top of the solder, and then when you notice the solder is fully melted, then you just sort of just drop the capacitor in place. This takes a little bit of practice to, to do, and it takes a little, little technique and a little getting used to, but that's all it really is, is you just heat up the solder. See, like the capacitor can wiggle around on you. You just heat up the solder and then just drop it, is essentially all that is. Now, there's also certain types of uh, solder paste out there that are sticky. So you could just put it right on, right on the location, and it'll stick, and then you could just heat it up. 
my solder paste is not like that, so that's why I'm doing it uh, with the tweezers and then dropping it, as you see. And the little nozzle really helps to concentrate the heat right on the component. You don't want too much heat on the component, but that's why it's nice to just go around in like a little circle. And you're doing it pretty quickly. Just wiggle the hot air gun a little bit. Get all that solder nice and loose. It also helps if you have the PCB board clamped down. Some of them I did uh, clamp, some of them I didn't because I was doing uh, a bunch of these. So just for time and speed, not having to continuously clamp each one helped me do it a little bit faster. And now we're going to be uh, tinning we're going to be tinning the chip, but first we're adding flux to the chip. Now you don't necessarily exactly have to do this because the board is already tinned. But I'm going to just do it anyway, just to show you the, there's multiple techniques and multiple options. And for this, I'm using the 3 uh, the three millimeter chisel tip, and I'm just going over each one with just a drop of solder. Just putting a tiny little bit of solder on the feet and then some bridge con connections, but we can clean those up pretty, pretty easily. And that's why you also have the solder sucker handy, just in case. Now if you do bridge these connections, if you kind of just get the tip of the iron in between it and like wipe away the solder, that's a good way to unbridge the connection. Pretty like using the iron to kind of remove the solder. And then we're just gonna keep going over each every little point just putting a little bit of solder on each one so that way the reason why we're doing this is because when you put the chip in place all you have to do is heat up the pins and push them down and then the best way to do that is you want to make sure you get all the ones in the corner done and as you see here that's, that's what I'm doing I just did all the ones in the corner first and then you can go in and then individually just push each pin down and that's why having um, like the chisel tip is nice because one side is flat and you just push down on each pin and then just sort of let it let let the iron do the work for you because the pads tinned and then also the feet are tinned you're just melting the two solder together if you saw my uh, video where I did about how to solder there's really good demonstrations of that in there but that's all it really is now you don't also you don't have to use the chisel tip, you could also hot air this, like this, but for these specific chips, I actually prefer to uh, use, do each pin by hand with the iron. I feel it just gets a stronger connection as opposed to holding it in place and then hitting it with hot air. I don't know, it, preference, but there's multiple options. It, it, I guess it all works down to whatever you feel most comfortable with. And I guess I just feel more comfortable with the iron. So that's how I surface mount solder by hand. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Have you surface mount soldered before? Do you solder or do you just find it interesting? Let me know more about you and what you do. So I don't know. I'm curious. I just want to know. So thank you guys either way very much for watching. Uh, thanks for checking out all my other videos, following us on Facebook, Twitter, all that kind of stuff, checking out the website. And uh, thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.